Hello and welcome to Tinder Lost Gaming and our new playthrough of Arkham Horror the Living Card Game. Uh, sticking with the Arkham Universe, the Arkham Files from Fantasy Flight, but moving across to one of their other systems, which is um, the Living Card Game, uh, Arkham Horror. Looking forward to playing this. We're going to be playing through the Path to Carcosa cycle, uh, which is considered to be one of the best cycles they've released. They've released quite, quite a number now. The path to Carcosa is considered um, to be one of the one of the best. So let's just quite take a quick look at the cycle we're going to be playing through. So you can see there we're going to be playing, as I said, the path to Carcosa, which consists of the curtain call, the last king, echoes of the past, the unspeakable oath. The Phantom of Truth, The Pallid Mask, Black Stars Rise, and Dim Carcosa. Um, they're the scenarios that make up the cycle. And we're going to be taking Jacqueline and Harvey through that, two of our new starter decks that we did the unboxing for. Uh, hopefully you've watched our video. I have taken the decision to uh, only stick with the expansion cards, the XP cards that come with the deck. I'm not going to be delving into my wider collection. I want to see these play through um, as they're meant to be, as they're meant to be by the designers. So there's a number of expansion cards to, for them to, to, to delve into. So it'll be interesting. Again, I've not seen many of the cards and I'm deliberately not trying to look at them before we get to the point where we can hopefully spend some XP when we've completed the scenarios. We may well take um, a side trip um, through the course of the campaign. That's what the side missions or side scenarios have been designed for. We've got a number of them that we can play through. Uh, be interesting if you've got any views on side scenarios or side ones that you'd like to see. Drop us a comment in the uh, comments box. Um, I've got all of them, so be interested to see what your thoughts are on where to take Harvey and Jacqueline off onto a side quest, if you like. What we're going to do now is we're going to nip across to the online campaign log that I'm going to be keeping for this campaign so we can see where we're at, can see a bit of the setup and then actually we'll move across to the table so we can then start the game properly. So we've got our investigators set up, Jacqueline and Harvey, that the deck's all been put into Arkham DB which is a really good online resource. And then you can import them into this. Um, it's an app, but I'm just running the app via the computer. Um, you can run the app on your phone, but you can import your Dex Markham DB into this, and you can also track your XP, etc. So let's just read through what it says. You awaken with a start as though shaken by an unseen force. You must have slept for quite a time for quite some time, for there are only a few other patrons in the audience and no performers on stage. The lights are dimmed and the stage curtains are tattered and ripped, though you do not remember that being the case during the first act. You wait a moment before you are sure this isn't part of the performance. As you wait, a foul but unrecognisable smell permeates the air. How long have you been asleep? Shaking up your drowsiness, you walk towards one of the seated patrons and ask for the time, but he doesn't respond. It's then that you realise that you're speaking to a corpse. Oh dear, not a very good start. So we can see from the setup, I've gathered every all, all the encounter sets um, that are required for this. Uh, let's just bring that up. Um, and then we've set aside the... Um, out of play, the man in the pallid mask, and let's just get that over there so I can see what I'm doing. Bear with me for just two seconds. There we go. So we set aside the man in the pallid mask, the Royal Emerald Street, and each copy of Lobby Doorway, and each copy of Backstage Doorway. We've put the theatre, lobby, and balcony, and backstage locations into play. Each investigator begins it at the theatre. If Lola Hayes has chosen as an example, you can invest there, which she isn't, and then we can just have a quick look at the placement. So we've got the balcony, and then we've got the lobby, the theatre, and the backstage all ready to go. That's where they should be located, and we'll go across to the table in a second. Shuffle the remainder of the encounter decks, which we've done. 
and we are ready to start playing the scenario now uh, we are playing on standard so the chaos bag is um as it is there one plus one two zeros two minus three minus ones two minus two is a minus three and minus four three skulls um a um auto fail token and a mythos token effect token so we're, we're good to go on that so we're playing on standard there we go um we're not ready to end the scenario yet so we'll make a move across to the table in just two seconds okay we're now uh, across at the table and we can see we've set up our scenario as indicated by the scenario setup we've got our balcony in play we've got our lobby in play theater and backstage and both harvey and jacqueline are ready at the theater um, we've got our agenda and act decks we're going to go through in a second and we've got our um, encounter deck over here let's give it a good old shuffle just to make sure we've got that all sorted out um, we'll run through the act and agenda in a second and I'll turn over the theatre card because that's where we're at take a little bit of set up this one a few different camera angles to try and get everything uh, for you guys and girls uh, in, in place let's just make sure the encounter deck's all good give it a good shuffle we go that's all done ready to go um, right I've got a few camera angles here so just bear with me a second let's go to the individual cards so we can have a look and see what we're playing with so there we are we're playing on standard um, so the skull token is going to give us a minus one uh, minus three if I've got three or more horror on you so that's going to be quite tasty and then the other, uh, the uh, cultist, the stone tablet, and the sort of uh, hearty thing uh, is minus four. Wow. If your location has at least one horror on it, take one horror from the token pool. If your location has no horror, place one horror on it instead. So we'll keep an eye on that. Take that up for a second. And then we've got um, at one which is called Awakening. Uh, you pinch yourself to see if you are dreaming and sure enough, your skin stings and reddens. You take a few breaths and try to think rationally. Whatever is going on, you must explore the theatre to learn the truth of the matter. And this requires three clues per investigator. So we're going to need a total of six clues to progress the act, uh, which hopefully shouldn't be too much of a problem for our investigators but we need six in total so we'll keep an eye on that now we've got the agenda the third act agenda agenda one eight the third act the theater is eerily silent the old wooden floor creaks beneath your feet and a light rain gently patters on the roof that's quite apt because where i am at the moment there's a big storm coming in it's very windy and rainy outside so Nice day to play Arkham Horror. Um, so it's pat uh, gentle patters on the roof as you explore the auditorium. There are more rotting corpses among the seats and the rest of the crowd has vanished. And this is going to take six doom on it to progress. So we'll, we'll keep an eye on that. What I've also done is brought up um, some player bits and bobs. Lighting, I can't get it 100% great. Um, I've done the best I can. You can see the cards when they're laid out. Um, but I've got some player boards and we can see what I've stacked up with our five starting resources. The player boards, I'll put a link in the description. I got these off Etsy. Um, they come as MDF. I'll just give them a quick spray up. And we can track our health on one side. We can track our sanity on the other, which is really good. We've got a little place for our player card as well. We can clip our clues in here and any cards go into the discard here. I also, um, I like to um, pimp up my games a little bit. Uh, and there's a really good, uh, another site on Etsy called LCG Tokens. Um, they're these uh, sort of um, metal tokens that are sort of like 
Uh, don't know if you can see that particularly well. Oh, there we go. Resource. They, they do all sorts to go with the to go with the game, and they're just really tactile. And I've got the chaos bags as well, and they're all with the tokens as well. So I'll be tracking the actions with these three uh, tokens down here. So as I spend an action, I'll spend it and push it forward so that we can track that. And you can see they're, they're Seeker tokens as well. And the same for Jacqueline over here. She's got three on, on here as well. What I've also got is another token here because she could, she's got a special rule that she can only do once per round. So when she's done it, I'll put the token on her like that just to remind me that she has um, spent her done her special action that that round and as with anything in all the games i play um I, this is not um, a tutorial hopefully you've uh, watched or played a bit of arkham horror lcg yourself i don't intend on explaining too many of the rules um, i pr probably get stuff wrong as i tend to do uh, it's not intentional uh, i don't try and i play for fun uh, that's the whole ethos of the channel we're just playing for fun um, so if I do make mistakes, my apologies, they're not intentional and they're not me trying to just game the game or win the game. It's not the sort of player I am. I just like to play and have fun. So if there are any mistakes, and there can be um, in this game because there's a number of things like uh, in any card game, if any of you are used to playing games, uh, living card games or games like Magic the Gathering, for example, player windows and the turn, you know, the order in which cards um, should be played, etc., uh, that can get a little bit complicated. Um, I don't find it so much with this game. It's all fairly self-explanatory, but sometimes there are uh, things that come up where I might just need to check the rules, um, or uh, you know, to make sure I'm getting things correct. But if I do make any mistakes, they are really not done intentionally, and um, you know, please point them out to me so I can spot them in the future. Also, just to finish off before we actually start the game itself. Each of the um, each of the this game has a, an individual phases, so a round sequence. So the first thing we're going to do is a mythos phase. We don't do that during the first round, which we're going to you know, come on to in a minute. But during the mythos phase, first thing you do is place the doom on the agenda. Then you check to see if the doom threshold has been satisfied. If you do, you advance it, and then you draw one. Each investigator draws one card from the uh, encounter deck. Then we move on to the investigation phase and you can um whoever goes first goes first there's no there's no set thing here you harvey can go first one round jack can go first second round harvey is considered the lead investigator so any lead investigator decisions he will have to make um, but we can do all sorts of things in our investigation phase um, then we move on to the enemy phase if there are any enemies in play we do what we're supposed to do with those and then we go move into the upkeep phase where we reset all our actions uh, we ready all exhausted cards um, we then draw a card and gain a resource um, and then we check our hand size um, and then we discard down to eight cards uh, that will be applicable to Jacqueline uh, it won't be so applicable to Harvey because hopefully he'll have cards that increase his hand size that's just, that seems to be the way that he tends to work um, yeah so I think with that we are ready to make a start now as we've said just a second ago um, we don't have a mythos phase to start off with we go straight into the investigator phase so let's put that up there we go um, and we're at the theater so we're going to flip this card over and see what it says let's bring that across here so we can all see it so the theater has got a two shroud it's got no clues on it and it says to say that the theater is in disarray would be a profound understatement the walls and seats previously polished to a shine are cracked and caked with dirt the curtains are tattered and the set is stained with old blood you aren't sure what's worse, the smell of rot or the nagging feeling that you've been asleep for a very long time. Okay. So let's put that back in play. Oh, next thing we need to do, we haven't actually started, we need to draw, we need to draw our hand. Um, getting ahead of myself there for a bit. So let's look at um, what we're going to get. So we'll start off with Harvey and uh, we'll shuffle his deck. He's going to draw five cards and then 
make a decision on whether he does any mulligans or not. Any weaknesses in the deck will go straight to mulligan. So, one, oh, there we go. Weakness straight away. So, one, two, three, four. That goes straight away. So, five. So, we've got a deduction. We've got a higher education. We've got a feed the mind. We've got an extensive research. And we have got a disc of its armor. Hmm, okay. There'll be a few pauses in this while I try to think of what we're going to be doing. Extensive research is a cost of 12, but it, it, um, we can reduce it for buy one for each other card in our hand. We don't necessarily need that at the moment, so that's going to get uh, mulliganed. Deduction could be quite handy to keep. I'm going to keep deduction. Higher education I think will be valuable moving forward. So I'm going to keep that. Feed the mind. We can exhaust feed the mind and spend a secret. Test one um, intellect. And then for each point we receive succeed we can draw a card. That might be worth keeping. And this give it Zama. I don't think we necessarily need that at the moment. So let's keep feed the mind and disc it to Zama. So those two are going to go and then we'll draw two more. We're going to get a Witten Green, which is an ally, which is really good. And we're going to get a Forbidden Time. Excellent. Okay, so those three will go back into the deck and we'll give that a shuffle up. Oops, Daisy. Back in there. Give it a good shuffle. And then we'll give it a cat weasel cut. And then that can go back down there. That's our starting hand for Harvey. And then we're going to do a similar thing for Jacqueline. She's going to draw five cards. One two, three, four, five. So what we've got there, we've got two parallel fates. We've got a ritual candles. We've got an ineffable truth and a robes of endless night. Um, I was really looking to get into her Azir Flame, which is a really good card. So I think I'm going to... Ritual Candles is quite cool. That's quite nice. I think I'm going to keep Ritual Candles and Robes of Endless Night. And then those, the other three, can go back into the deck in a second. So those are going to go, and we'll draw three more cards. And we're going to get a Hypnotic Gaze. We're going to get a clairvoyance. And then we're going to get a scrying mirror. Excellent. Okay, that's a good start in hand, I think. Now we'll, those three will go back in and we'll give it a shuffle. Cat weasel cart. Which is that. And then that's going to go back there like that. And so we've got Jacqueline's starting hand as well. So we'll just put that there for a second. While we... So we are on the investigation phase. Um, at the theatre, we can see there are no clues there. So I think probably for this turn, it's going to be a little bit of a setup um, for um, Harvey and Jacqueline. Move that there. So let's look at Harvey first of all. He's got five resources to play. So we've got Feed Your Mind, Higher Education. So we're going to spend one action to get Higher Education into play. 
which is while you have five or more cards in your hand, higher education gains as a free, as a basically as a free action, you can spend a resource to get plus one will or plus one intellect. That's really good. So that's zero, but it does cost an action. Um, and then we're going to pay four. So one, two, three, four to get Witten Green out. And she is, while I control a tome or relic asset, you get plus one um, intellect. And I can tap her after you reveal a location or put a new location into play, exhaust Witten Green, search the top six cards of your deck for a tome or relic asset and draw it, shuffle your card deck. So that was his second action. And... Yeah, let's my third action and spending his last resource he's going to put into play the forbidden time. This will come into play later on, hopefully in the in the campaign. Gets five secrets on it, so one, two, three, four, five. And it's got use five secrets um, so as an action exhaust forbidden tome and spend one secret draw one card then if you have ten or more cards in your hand and there are no secrets on forbidden tome you may discard it and record in your campaign log that you have translated the tome we've got to remember with harvey his special rule is after an investigator at your location draws one or more card during the investigation phase he gets to draw one more card haven't drawn any cards this turn but it's good to know so that's all of um, harvey's actions used up so we'll go across to jacqueline okay what we got scrying mirror Which is awesome. Clairvoyance, hypnotic gaze, ritual candles, robes of endless night. So I think, um, first of all, uh, Jacqueline's going to play um, three, spend an action to play robes of endless night. One, two, three and i can tap that when i play a spell card exhaust it and uh, i can reduce the cost of that card by one she's got two left so she'll take a resource or spend a resource to play in that action to play ritual candles now again tap it after i draw a symbol uh, uh, from when I'm performing a test, I can get plus one skill um, for the um, for this test, which is quite good. So she's got one action left. Can't really afford anything else. She's a bit shy on resources. I think I'm gonna I think I'm gonna spend an action to gain a resource. Don't know how efficient that is, but again, like I said, I'm not that. I'm not a meta player so she'll use her last action to um, gain a resource so that's her ready so that's uh, the investigation phase done we then move on to the enemy phase there are no enemy enemies obviously in play at the moment so oh, let's just turn that off so there are no enemies in play at the moment. So we go on to the next phase, which is the upkeep phase. Reset all actions, which we're going to do. Move those down so we know what they're ready to be used again. Ready all exhausted cards. Well, I haven't got any exhausted cards. Each investigator draws a card. So Harvey is going to draw a card and he's going to get Cult Invocation. This is, this is an awesome card for Harvey. 
It's got as an additional cost to play a cult invocation. It's two cost to play. I can discard two cards, and he uses his um, he uses his intellect uh, to, instead of a fight, and he gets plus one intellect and deals plus one damage for each card discarded. That's one of his really good cards. So that's a really good card for for Harvey to get. And he gains a resource. And then for Jacqueline, she is going to get another Hypnotic Gaze. So it's a fast, so it doesn't cost any actions for her to play. She can play it when any attacks and investigate and investigate at her location. Cancel the attack, and then we can reveal a random token from the cow's board, uh, the bag. But we can use her special effect if we need to on that one. So she's got two of those in hand now. And then she gains a resource. So she's got three. We check our hand sizes. Um, they're all fine. Jacqueline's got four. Harvey's got three, which is all fine. So then we move on to the Mythos Fates. First thing we do is place one Doom on the agenda. So the agenda is the bottom one, so we're going to put one there, so we know where we're at. So one is uh, started. Check to see if we need to advance the agenda. We don't, because we need six to advance it, so that's all fine. And then we move on to the encounter phase. So we're going to draw a card, and we'll start off with Harvey as the lead investigator. Let's see what he gets. He gets a swarm of rats, which is going to go straight away into his um, threat area. It's a one fight, one health, three evade creature, and it does one damage. It's just an annoying little little thing there. That's going to come into Harvey's threat area. So we'll, we'll put that there like that, so we know we've got to deal with that. And then we're going to go on to oops, going to draw a card for Jacqueline. And we get Spirit's Torment. Revelation. Attached to your location. Forced. After you leave attached location, you must either take one horror or lose one action. As an action, spend, place one of your clues on attached location. Discard Spirit's Torment. Okay, well we can't do that because there's no clues on there, so we're going to have to remember that. So let's put that up with the theatre. I'm going to attach that there like that. have to remember that, taking one horror or... Is it one horror? Or lose one action. Okay. That's fair enough. So that's it for the Mythos phase. We then go into the investigation phase. Hmm. Right. Okay. So Harvey's going to have to deal with this swarm of rats. Oh, that's a bit annoying, that Spirit's Torment, because every time you leave it, you're going to lose, take a horror. Need to get rid of that. That's a real pain. That's a real pain. I don't really want to waste a, um, a cult invocation on Swarm of Rats. He has got uh, a one a one fight. Ooh, might have to. <laughs> That's going to be really annoying. One and one. Yeah. Let's 
try to see if there's anything that Harvey can do without using a cult invocation. I could. I uh, don't really want to chuck it. So one versus one. Poor old Harvey didn't really want to get a monster this early in the game, but there we go. Swarm of rats. Just trying to think, Jacqueline could take the rats off with Harvey by engaging them. She's got a 5 2, so plus 1. Plus 1. Got hypnotic gaze. Mm. So it takes it to three. Let's do that. Let's do that. So for her first action. She is going to engage the swarm of rats. Um, and then she's going to spend her next action to do a fight action. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to commit um, hypnotic gaze to her attack, so she's going to go to fight three versus one. Fight three versus one, and she's also going to spend and do her special action, which means she draws two additional tokens from the chaos bag. Grab the chaos bag. Give it a good shake up. Let's have a look, see what we get. So the first we're going to draw three and discard two. So the first one, plus one. Second one, skull. Third one, minus two. So she can, on the reveal token, she can choose and cancel two non-auto failures or one non-auto failure. So obviously she's going to discard those two and keep the plus one. So she wins the test. Um, and kills the swarm of rats. Put those back in the bag. Swarm of rats is defeated. Hypnotic face goes, goes to her discard pile. Like that. Uh, so that's taken her two actions. A third action. I don't really want to be moving into a new space with a third action. So again, hmm. So it's going to pay three. Going to pay three. Oops, nice. Three resources to bring in the scrying mirror. Let's have a quick look at that. Scrying mirror gets four secrets on it. Um, I can exhaust it after a skill test at your location begins. Exhaust the mirror and spend one secret, and we reveal the chaos tokens before we do the test effectively. So you know what you're going to be getting, you know what you're going up against, which is a really cool card. So that's in play with four secrets on it. So let's just grab 
different tokens we can use for secrets. I might have to move, use some different tokens because it's not sometimes enough to um, cover. So she's got that sort of four secrets on it. So we're, we're good to go on that. And that was her third action. And she's used her special ability. So, what are we going to do with Harvey? We need to start moving. So where are we going to go? The theatre is connected to the backstage. Um, it's also connected to the balcony and the lobby. Harvey seems like the sort of bloke that's going to go backstage. So he's going to spend his first action to move. I'm not going to um, lose an action because the spirit's torment. So poor old Witten is going to get a horror on her. We have to take one horror or lose an action. She can, she can take two. Two and two. She's quite a handy little um, ally. We'll reveal the backstage. And what are we going to get for the backstage? We're going to get it's a three shroud with one clue on it. Forced. When backstage is revealed, put two set aside backstage doorway tokens into play at random. While you're at backstage, each hidden treasury in your hands counts as three cards instead of one for the purposes of counting your hand size. Well, we um, haven't got any treachery cards in our hand, so we're all good. Going to get one clue on it. Also, we've got to remember Witten. We're going to... Oh, sorry. Uh, we're going to remember Witten, who has got the after you reveal a location, exhaust Witten, search the top six cards for a time wall relic asset and shuffle your card. So we'll tap Witten and have a look at the top six cards of our deck. So we're going to get uh, that's good. That's going to be um, so that's a, that's a weakness. Witten, another Witten green. Uh, preposterous, preposterous sketches, which is not a time. Disc of it's and then another occult invocation. So there's no uh, time or relics. Oh no, disc. Disc is a relic. Um, so draw it. So we'll take the disc of it's i That's going to go into his hands, and then we're going to. Put these back into the deck and shuffle it all up. <clears throat> well, that's that shuffle done. I'm just going to pause the video whilst to get the backstage or oh, backstage doorways. So let's just. Um, put two of the backstage doorways. So here's the backstage doorways, there's three of them. We'll give them a little bit of a shuffle. And then we'll take the top one, and then the bottom one is our two. And then that one can get put to one side. And then I'm just gonna pause the video while I get the rest of the um, encounter, sort of the layout sorted out, and then I'll be back in two secs. Okay, we're back. Uh, just a very quick uh, setup there. So we've put the two uh, random backstage doorways into play, both connected to the backstage. That's the only place they are connected to. So Harvey has spent his first action to move across, obviously. Took the one horror on Witten. Um, opened up the backstage, which has got one clue on it. Um, and then we've put those in play. So that was his first action. His... Second action is going to be to investigate the um, backstage. It's a, uh, got a shroud of three. Um, he is currently uh, five, um, six because of uh, Witten in play because he does control a time, which is the forbidden secret. So he's at six. Um, he 
He's going to play. So that's his second action is to investigate. So he's going to play a deduction um, to give him seven. So he is seven uh, um, at three. So we'll see what he gets. And he's going to get into the chaos bag and he's going to get boom, minus one. Perfect. So he successfully passes the test, which means he's going to get the clue. And the clue of, of the backstage. And then because deduction says um, if this skills test is successful while investigating the location, discover one additional clue at the location as well. So he gets another clue. He gets two clues for that, which is awesome. That goes into his discard pile. Okay, that was his second action. Third action. I'm going to spend his third action again, maybe not most glamorous, but he's going to gain a resource for his third action. He's got some stuff he needs to do. So that was the investigation phase. Enemy phase, there are no enemies on the table at the moment, so we don't need to worry about that. We then go into upkeep, which is reset all actions so we're going to get all of our actions back i'm just going to move down so i know where they're at also uh we ready all exhausted cards so witten is gonna is gonna ready at some point we need to do those forbidden times i know that forbidden times is a bit of a pain but i'm pretty sure there's some stuff there's got to be some stuff in these upgrades uh, that we can we can use. So it's going to be worth doing that. It's going to take us five actions, which is annoying. But maybe if we do one a turn, um, then we can you know go through that. So we've reset all exhausted cards. Each investigator draws a card and gains a resource. So I'll give them a resource first. So Harvey goes to what three? Jacqueline goes to one. Harvey's going to draw a card and he gets a laboratory assistant. Um, your maximum hand size is increased by two. Uh, after the laboratory assistant enters play, draw two cards. We can't play her at the moment because obviously we've got Wit and Green in place. So we haven't got Charisma. So that's his card. And then uh, Jacqueline is going to draw and she gets an Ineffable Truth. Three charges. It's a spell. Spend one charge, evade. The evasion attempt uses um, willpower instead of agility. And if you succeed, you deal one damage to the evaded enemy. And if the mythos uh, token is drawn, you get plus one or, or a plus one or zero, you get to lose a resource. So that's her card. We check our hand sizes, we're all good. Jacqueline's at three. Harvey needs to build his up, he's at four. So that's the end of the round. So Jacqueline will have access to her special ability again. And then we're going to go on to the um, encounter cards. So let's see what we get for... Oh, no, wrong one. Let's see what we get for... Harvey's going to go first and draw a card off the encounter deck and he gets... It's a peril. So technically, <laughs> this is the only problem when he plans solo because... Well, with a peril, it's hidden. Jacqueline shouldn't know anything about this, um, really. But it says, uh, Revelation, secretly add whispers in your head, uh, anxiety to your hand. I cannot trigger free abilities. Two actions to discard it. Oh, dear, oh, dear. That's a pain, because um, that doesn't access... I'm, I'm not really accessing higher education at the moment, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to spend two actions to get rid of that. Um, and this is what this game does really well. It, it, it soaks up your actions. 
Um, you, th you think you've got your, your, your turn played out and then the encounter deck says, ah, ah, no, you're going to be doing something different. <laughs> anyway, so Jacqueline, you didn't see that. So that's going to go into his hand. And then we'll draw an encounter card for Jacqueline. And she gets a Poltergeist. Cannot be damaged except by spells, relics or encounter cards. And then we can parlay with it to attempt to banish it. If you succeed, deal it one damage. Okay, so that's going to go into her threat area. What we forgot to do, and we must do this in order, is we forgot to put a Doom um, on the agenda. Which is the first thing we should do. I'm rustling around that for your future. So it gets two Doom. Um, we check to see if it's going to trigger. It's not because it's still at six. And then we would uh, go on to drawing the, the encounter deck. Um, so, okay. That's it for the Mythos phase. We're going to go into the investigation phase. Ooh. There we go. Investigation phase. Right. So... Got a fight of three. <laughs> That's two sanity. Book of three. Book of three, book of four. Five of two. Hmm. A little thinksy. A little thinksy. Have a quick look at RB. Got three resources. Well, I think Harvey's going to be quite simple this turn. So he is going to spend two actions to get rid of that stupid whispers in your head. So that's going to be discarded. It's going to go there into the discard pile. And then he will spend an action to take a secret off of Forbidden Knowledge. Might as well. Not the most exciting turn from Harvey, but it is what it is. Then we really need to think about what Jacqueline's going to do. She needs to do two damage to the Poltergeist. She, so it's going to be a stray, or it's a fight of three. Her fight's two. She hasn't got anything at the moment that could do any damage to it. Mm. Well, let's try. Let's let's see if we can get Jacqueline's sort of engine going. Um, so we are going to attempt to bite the poltergeist it's three i'm two um so we'll spend the action to start the chain of the fight um i am going to spend a secret from scrying mirror which basically says um, after a skill test at your location begins, exhaust scrying mirror and spend one secret. So we'll exhaust that. And we will perform the reveal chaos token step before we actually commit any cards. And we also, at this point, we're also going to do Jacqueline's special, which means she draws two additional tokens. So effectively what I'm doing is I'm drawing three tokens against a fight to see what happens. I'm currently three, uh, two against it's three. So let's have a look to see what we get. I'm going to draw, so the first one is that. 
Second one is that. Third one is that. Oh, God. So, what's the skull? Minus one. Or minus three if you've got three or more horror. So, they're all minus one. So, I need to get to four with her fight, which I can't do. Which I cannot do. Oh, that's so annoying. I was hoping to get a zero or a mythos or a, or a plus one. I was thinking with three tokens she would have probably been able to do it. Uh, three fight. Could have parlayed. Could have parlayed there. Never mind. Never mind. Okay, so let's put those back in the in the chaos bag. Put those back in the chaos bag. Put that in the couple. So she's got two actions left. Could try and deal one damage to it doing the parlay test. She's at three. She's at three. I've got clairvoyance I could chuck into it. So right, let's have a go at a parlay test for a second action. Um she'll put Fair points into the skill test to take her to four. That's four versus three. Four versus three. See what we get. And we're going to get minus one. So four or four. Yep, we do. We do a damage to it. We do a damage to it. So I put a damage on there. So that was her second action. So that's clairvoyance gone. I could go for a straight test, three versus three. That's the only chance I've got, really. Cannot be damaged by spells. Oh, I need to remember the ritual candles as well. So I need to drop my draw a token. So see, yeah, third action, I want to go for parlay, three versus three. But if we draw a symbol, we could be all right. So let's see what we get. And we get minus three <laughs> a minus three is not going to cut it okay fair enough fair enough chaos bag fair enough that was her third action okay right that's it for the investigation phase we're going to go on to the enemy phase and we know that We've got the poltergeist there. It does two sanity onto uh, Jacqueline. So she's going to go down one, two. She's going to go down to seven sanity, which is slightly frustrating. But there we go. There's nothing we can do about that. No other enemies in play. So we then go on to the enemy. Uh, that was the enemy phase. We then go on to the upkeep phase. Reset all actions, so we get all of our actions back. We ready all exhausted cards. So, Scrying Mirror is going to be back in play. 
Portergeist is there. Like that. So we've already all exhausted cards. We draw a card and gain a resource, so I'll gain a resource quickly. That bit doesn't really make much difference. And then Harvey will draw a card and he will get extensive research, 12 cost to play, to uh, intellect though on it, which is good. Reduce the cost of re extensive research by one for each other card in your hand, discover two clues at your location. So that's his card. And Jacqueline, she's gonna get another ritual candles. Not what we needed. Not what we needed. But it's a willpower. So that's gonna be her card. She's taken a um, resource. Check our hand size. Jacqueline's at three. Harvey is at five. So we're all good. That's it for the upkeep phase. We're on to the Mythos phase. Um, we place a Doom on the agenda. We're at three, so we're halfway. And I don't really feel like we're making too much headway at the minute. But there we go. Well, hopefully we'll, we'll do that in a minute. Uh, and then we'll start off um, with, so that's the event. We'll check to see if they're doing the advances. It doesn't because there's only three on it. And then we draw one card from the top of the encounter deck. So we're going to draw Harvey's card first of all. Let's see what he gets. He's going to get Descent into Madness. Search. If you have at least three horror on you, lose one action. Well, we haven't got three horror on us, but it does get Search, which means we draw another card. So Harvey's going to now draw the Kin's Edict. Revelation. For each cultist enemy in play, move one clue from that enemy's location to that enemy. Until the end of the round, each cultist enemy in play gets plus one five for each clue and or doom on it. If no clues on this are moved by this effect, then the Kings Edict gain surge. There's no cultist enemy in play. The Poltergeist is a monster geist, and there are no other monsters or anything like that. So we're going to we're going to search. So Harvey's now going to get for his third card, Black Stars Rise. Best four book, uh, intellect, sorry. If you fail, you must either place one Doom on the current agenda or take one horror at each point that you fail by. This effect can cause the current agenda to, to pass. So book of four, intellect of four, his standard of five, he's at six because of Witten. Um, we do have five or more cards in hand so we can spend resources so he's a um, five versus four he's at five versus four five versus four we'll spend the resource to get to six of higher education higher education's in play here so we're at six versus four plus two i think i'm going to risk it for a biscuit and leave it there so let's see what we draw six versus four and we get oh an elder sign plus one which is fine uh, so we're at seven versus four, which means we pass. Um, and the mythos effects, the elder sign effect for him is draw a card. So Harvey's going to draw a card and he's going to get another forbidden tone. So that can go into his hand. And we pass that. That can go back into the bag. Black Star's Rise goes. <laughs> Three cards in the encounter phase for Harvey. Lovely. Um, so that was Harvey done, and then we're going to draw for Jacqueline, and she is going to get, oh my god, Fanatic. Um, spawn, revealed location with the most clues. After Fanatic enters play, move one clue from Fanatic's location to Fanatic. From Fanatic's location to Fanatic. When you de defeat Fanatic, take control of all of its clues. Um, well, neither 
neither revealed location has any clues on it. So on my understanding there is the lead investigation investigator will get to choose where it goes, either at the theatre or at the backstage. Um, we'll put it in with Harvey. And that will come into his threat area. So we've got the fanatic, but we've got some we've now got some tools to be able to deal with that fanatic, which is awesome. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. So that's the uh, mythos phase done. We then go on to the investigation phase. And obviously we get to reset Jacqueline's special ability because the round, new round started. So we need to do one more damage to the power guys by parlaying book. That's seriously not helpful. That's seriously not helpful. I haven't got any of her spells out to do damage at the minute. That's that's the frustrating thing. Um, so let's do let's do what we did before, but we're doing the parlay test. So we're going to spend one to start doing the test. We're going to spend one and exhaust scrying mirror make sure that we can pull the tokens first we can have a look at what we need to do and then we'll use her special ability to draw three tokens from the scry mirror and get rid of one and this is all before she start, starts the test so it's just going three three and three and it is a straight three and three as well I haven't got anything to adjust that but don't forget if we draw ritual candles, so first one is going to be that, second one is going to be that, and the third one is going to be that. Oh. Okay. That was quite... Oops, sorry, you can't see it. I'll draw, draw a minus three, minus four, minus three, and a zero was the last one I drew. So with her... Um, ability, she's going to ignore the minus four and the minus three. Those go back into the bag, so she's going to be sitting at a zero. Um, and don't forget, this is all done because of Scry Mirror before I commit any cards. I don't need to commit any cards to it because her parlay poly value, her intellect is three and it's a three. So we do one damage to the ghoul, uh, the, sorry, the poltergeist, which is enough to kill it. So that goes up into the encounter. That goes back into the pool. And that was her first action. She's finally managed to get rid of the poltergeist. At zero, and go back into the bag. So she's got two. So let's get let's try and get some stuff going for her. Um, she's going to spend one. She's going to exhaust um, the robes of the endless night, reduce the cost of a spell by one. She's going to spend her two remaining resources to bring in ineffable truth. Can't see that just at the second, but basically it's got three charges on it. And we can use our willpower to, instead of um, agility to evade. And it can deal one damage to evaded enemies. So if we get anything else in there, we can we can do a little shimmy. So that was our second action. We've got to get a move on. I don't like using my last move to move. <laughs> To reveal something but i think i'm gonna i could i could regret this so her last action she's going to move out of the theater and into um spirits torment i'm sorry into the lobby but we are going to have to take one horror or lose an action well we can't lose an action so she's going to have to take a horror she takes it down to six 
can't put it on anything else. Um, but that is her third action, which is going to reveal. Is going to reveal the lobby. We get in the lobby. We have got four shroud, one clue, forced. Uh, when lobby is revealed, put two of the set aside lobby doorway locations into play at random. For two actions, you can draw three cards. Okay, so let's just put that back there. He is there. Let's just do that. Uh, gets one clue on it. And then I'm just going to pause for a second while I get the lobby doorway. There's three cards. Three cards there. We'll do the same thing. We'll give them a cat weasel shuffle. And then we'll take the top one and then the bottom one. We'll pause the video for a second while I rejig the um, map. Right, that's the map all sorted out. We've got the two revealed or two lobby doorways in play. Only can access through the through the lobby itself. That was um, Jacqueline's last action. So we're going to move on to um, Harvey. Harvey's got a fanatic to deal with. Um, three fight, two wounds, three evade. We couldn't reveal it at the well. We put it into where um, Harvey was because there was we couldn't fulfil the spawn um, thing, which was revealed location with the most clues. Um, we couldn't move one clue from the fanatic's location to the fanatic because that was where he um, there was no clues on it. So I, I'm assuming that does come into play. I'm going to play it as though it does come into play. So he's going to deal with that now. So he's got three actions. Let's just get his cards all sorted out. So. He is going to spend one action and pay two to play a cult invocation. As an additional cost to play a cult invocation, discard up to two cards from your hand. So, I'm going to discard. I'm going to discard uh, the poor old laboratory assistant. Can't get her into play at the moment. And we're going to discard extensive research. So, those are the two cards we've discarded. Right, this attack uses intellect instead of fight. He gets plus one intellect and deal plus one damage for this attack for each card discarded as part of your, um, uh, as part of your uh, cards. Uh, you get plus one damage for this attack for each card discarded as part of this card's cost. So we are at five normally. Six because of Wit and Green. Seven, eight because we've discarded two cards against five, uh, against three, sorry. So eight against uh, foot three is uh, pretty good. So we'll go with those odds on the, in the Chaos Bag. And let's see what we get. We're going to get plus one. So Harvey does... Um, it does plus one damage for each card, so it does one normally, two, three. Fnatic's got two health, so the Fnatic is dead. Good old occult invocation that goes into the discard pile. So that's his first action. Need to get a shimmy on Char Harvey. So for his second action. He's going to move in. You're going to come down to here to the backstage doorway. Oh. Sorry, he's going to come down to this backstage doorway, and let's see what that brings into play. Four shroud, no clues. Three actions to heal three horror. That's pretty good, but 
not useful for what we need. Oops. So he's there. We've revealed it. No clues, unfortunately. So that was his second action. Third action. Might regret it. Going to take a secret off of the Forbidden Tome. Playing the long game here. Playing the long game. So that's it for Harvey. So that's it for the investigation phase. We then go into the enemy phase. And then now there aren't enemy, any enemies in play. So um, we don't have to worry about the enemy enemies. Because the Altergeist is gone, the Fanatic is gone. We're going to move on to the upkeep phase. We're going to reset all of our actions so we get all of our actions back. So they're all down there ready to use. Gonna ready any exhausted cards. So robes, um, readies, as does scrying mirror. So that's those in play. Harvey hasn't got any cards to ready, so he's all good. We're going to resource and get a card. So one for Harvey, one for Jacqueline. Um, Harvey's going to draw a card and he gets a laboratory assistant. She does. She really wants to come out. Maybe I have to give him charisma as a part of an upgrade. Um, and then Jacqueline is going to get Parallel Fates, which is look at the top four cards of the encounter deck and reveal a random token from the Chaos Bag. If it's a symbol, shuffle those cards into the encounter deck, otherwise return them to the top of the encounter deck in any order. And it's got a wild card on it as well for its um, skill tests. So that's that. We check our hand size. Um, Jacqueline's got three. Harvey has got four. So we're all good on that. That's the end of the round. This is going to reset. So Jacqueline's got access to a special ability again. Um, and then we go into the Doom phase, or the sorry, the Mythos phase. So we're going to put another Doom. We're two away now from the end of the third act. So four in play. We don't advance the Doom because it's not at its threshold. And then we get to draw an encounter card. And as always, we'll start off with. Harvey, and he's going to draw one from the top of the encounter deck, and he's going to get twisted to his will. Revelation. If there is no doom in play, which there is, twisted to his will gains surge. Otherwise, test willpower X, where X is the amount of doom in play. If you fail, discard two cards from your hand at random. Okay, so here's a willpower of four, uh, and it's four. Okay. Let's have a look at Harvey's cards. Hmm. Well, he is going to chuck. He's a four. He's a four. I can't use higher education because he's only got four cards in his hand. Which is slightly frustrating, but there we go. Um, I will chuck a Forbidden Tome into the mix. I will chuck a Forbidden Tome into the mix, which has got a wild card symbol on it, which takes him to five. And I've got a choice. Chuck a disc at it to 
take me to two plus. Disc is good. Disc is very good. Um, I'm at plus one at the moment. The chaos bag isn't being particularly kind to me today. So, I could discard two cards from my hand, two random cards. Do you know what? Actually, I'm going to leave it at that. Just take a risk on it. So, I'm at, I'm at five. Twisted two is Will of Doom and Paris four. So, let's see what we get. We're going to get Doom a minus one which we're fine because we chucked Forbidden Tome at it so it's a draw which means we win so he didn't lose Disc which is awesome so that's twisted to his will and then we're going to draw an encounter card for Jacqueline and she gets Dissonant Voices the classic uh, put this into play in a threat area can't play assets or events and at the end of the round it's discarded so let's put that straight on there like that so we know what's going on uh, i'm sorry we put that into play in the threat area there so we can't play any assets or events okay we then move on to the investigation phase Three versus four for Jacqueline. Three versus um, four. Four versus four. Try and get these clues. Four versus four. Just having a quick think about Jacqueline getting this clue. We could do her, her tricky tricksy. So yeah, let's do that. See if we can get see if we can get the clue. So we are gonna spend one to investigate, which starts the chain. Uh, we'll spend one of these secrets off of scrying mirror and exhaust it. So that we're going to reveal the chaos bag before we commit cards to the test. Because I, there's, there's a potential I could commit one card, so I'm going to do that. Um, we'll do her special ability, which is we're going to draw three tokens in total and discard two. Don't forget we've got ritual candles in place. Let's draw the cards and see what we get. So we're currently... Um, we're currently um, three versus four. I can get to four. So one, two, last one, three. Oh, nice. So at this point, I'm um, sorry. So you can see what I've just drawn. A minus four and two zeros. Minus four and two zeros. So we'll discard those two, leaving the zero in place. And at this point, we'll play um, Parallel Fates to give us a wild card. It takes us to four. So four and four, we win ties. So she gets that clue. So the clues come off of the lobby. So we've got three, we're halfway there now. Three clues. So that was her first action. <coughs> so first action. Oh, those need to go back into the chaos bag. Sorry, those tokens need to go back. Can't play assets or events, so shall she move? Yeah, let's move for a second action. 
down into the left hand lobby doorway and let's see what this says so that's a four one clue for each investigator when you are in the lighting box increase the resource cost of each card in your hand by two uh, okay but we get two clues on it so that's good two clues on it hopefully where Harvey's going he's going to be able to get some bits and bobs it's a four shroud and we've just used our shenanigans so for our last action draw a card she's only got two left so yeah let's draw draw a card she's going to get dark prophecy dark prophecy fast so it's basically a free action play when you would reveal a chaos token reveal five instead of one choose one of those tokens to resolve and ignore the rest we could actually take up to seven with her ability so dark prophecy is pretty good it's got a willpower and an agility for its signs so that is it um for uh jacqueline three actions harvey is gonna spend two actions effectively to go one two up to the last backstage doorway and let's see what this says rehearsal room one shroud one clue per investigator after you succeed by two or more while investigating the rehearsal room take one horror and it's worth a victory point well that's just dandy that is just dandy so harvey has one action left oh i don't want i don't really want to it'd be nice to um so let's investigate let's investigate he is at six versus six versus one um two clues on it six versus one six versus one this is where we want fairly high-ish minus would be nice and we're going to get six versus one a minus two takes us down to four so we still win by three so we are going to take um we are going to take horror for that uh, yeah we are going to take a horror there is a clue for harvey though he's now got three three clues let's put that back in play with one clue on it put that back in play with one clue on it um, and we are going to take a horror for that it's just one horror isn't it after you succeed by two or more while investigating it take a horror so he's down to seven just moved his little nubbin down there to seven that was his last action oh sorry that was the investigator face That is it for the investigator phase they've used all of their actions so we're now on to the enemy phase there aren't any enemies enemies in play so we don't need to worry about that we then go into the upkeep phase reset all actions so we're going to get all three of our actions back we're going to ready exhausted cards so scrying mirror comes back into play with one secret on it harvey doesn't need to ready anything he's all good um we'll draw a card and gain a resource so harvey gets a resource jacqueline gets a resource um harvey draws a card and he's going to get cryptic writings gain two resources 
after you draw cryptic writings your during your after you draw cryptic writings during your turn play it it's not my it's not my turn this is the upkeep phase i think so that goes into his hand I'm, if i've got that one wrong then let me know it says after you draw cryptic writings during your turn play it it's not my turn okay and then Jacqueline's going to draw a familiar spirit got one additional arcane slot which can be used to hold a spell and it's a one and one familiar so that's quite nice there's a one cost it won't be one cost though because where she is at the moment um resources by up to two it's got two clues on it four um check hand size so Jacqueline's at four she's good Harvey is at four. He really needs to get his motor going. He needs to get his engine going. So that's it for the upkeep phase. On to the mythos phase. We're going to put a, a doom on the agenda. It takes it to five. Getting close. We're going to we're going to trigger the next turn. Um, we're going to advance the de doom at the agenda if it's if the threshold is hit, which it hasn't. Um, and then we're going to go on to drawing a card from the encounter phase. So we're going to do Harvey first as normal. He's going to get another peril. Um, so shh, close your ears, Jacqueline. Um, add it to our hand. He cannot move more than once each turn. Two actions to discard it. Okay. So that's going to go into his. Oops. And then just drop his cards on the floor. I think we know what Harvey's going to be doing next turn. And then the encounter card for Jacqueline. Swarm of rats. So she's going to. They're going to come into play in her area. Oh, at the end of the round, Dissonant Voices goes. They're all, they're all done. So Jacqueline's got a swarm of rats, which she should be able to evade um, using ineffable. So we'll, we'll we'll do that next turn. Take those rats out. That wasn't too bad. That wasn't too bad. We need to get a shifty on. We're now on to the investigation phase. Um, start with Harvey. He's going to spend two actions to discard this flipping peril. Um, that's gone. And then he's going to spend another action to get the remaining clue. Hopefully off rehearsal room. He is at six still. Six book against one. <laughs> I'm definitely not going to be chucking any assets at it. Got cryptic writings in there as well, but I want to get the clue first of all. So a nice minus four would be lovely at this point. Not a lovely minus four would be delightful. And we're going to get... Oh. That's not too bad. Um, curtain pull is... Um, that's minus three. Just so you can see on here. Curtain pull. He has got horror on him. He's taken uh, one horror. So it's minus three. That does take him down to his six. So it's down to three. Um, but what does that say? If you succeed by two or, two or more, which I do, because it's only one. So he's going to take another horror for that joy. But he's going to get that last remaining clue. He's going to get that last remaining clue off the real hassle room, which puts us at five clues. We need to get one more to advance the act. 
one more to advance the axe so that skull goes back in there those can go off to one side and that is hardly all done two actions to get rid of that flipping peril and then one to pick up the last remaining clue off there now we have got three versus four so i need the plus one but nothing nothing that i can do to increase i mean get, get plus one from ritual oh no i need to deal with the swarm of rats first of all let's deal with the swarm of rats swarm of rats is one attack or one fight one health three evade and um yeah three evade so ineffable truth it's got three secrets on it let's just read what it says spend one charge evade this evasion attempt uses willpower instead of agility so she's willpower five so she's at plus two if you succeed deal one damage to it so three versus five Um, I will three versus five is plus two. I'm going to chuck a hypnotic gaze at it um, to give me no get that. What are you doing, MB? I'll chuck a ritual candles at it. Um, so that takes me to six. Six versus three. Six versus three on the swarm of rats. We're going to get minus four. That was our first action. Spend that up there. So that's that. So that ritual candles goes, and we haven't managed to Okay. Second action. Spend a charge. Do the same thing. We're at um five versus three. We'll chuck a familiar spirit at it. Take us to six versus three. It's alright. Chucked a familiar spirit at it to give me six versus three. I've taken another secret off ineffable truth. Get okay, that one four again off green. Let's see what we get. Um, she has taken Horus, so it's minus three, which means it's a, it's equal, because um, I'm at six because I chucked familiar spirit. Um, five, six, that's three minus three, that's a draw. We do evade it, and we deal one damage to the evaded enemy. Um, if an elder sign plus one or zero token is revealed, we lose a resource, but it hasn't, so that's killed the swarm of rats. So that's that. It's our second action. Dark oh, prophecy is not really going to pay us much. Really difficult what gets in. Um, last action. Draw a card. Come on. Crystal Pendulum. 
get plus one uh, willpower. After a skill test at your location begins, exhaust it, name a number of the test succeeds, and oh, that fails by that number, draw one, draw one card. Quite nice. Okay. So that is it for the investigation phase. We move on to the enemy phase. Um, there are no enemies in play. So we move on. We move on to the upkeep phase. Uh, we reset all our actions. So those all come back. We ready all exhausted cards. There are no cards to be ready because we didn't exhaust anything. We draw a card and gain a resource. So Harvey's now at four resources. Jacqueline's at um, three. Let's see what Harvey gets from the deck. Gets the Slano Fragments. We have got five or more cards. You get plus one intellect. Ten more cards, plus one will. Not bad. Not bad. Take that. And then Jacqueline, come on, get an offensive spell. Oh, Astral Travel. Move to any revealed location and reveal a random token from the Chaos Bag. If it's a, any type of symbol, must discard an item or an ally that I can control. Okay. Which doesn't really need to go anywhere. That would be hand. That would be more handy for um, good old Harvey to get down and get that those last clues. We check our hand size. Um, Jacqueline's at four. Harvey is at one, two, three, four, five. Got the resources. He just needs to get some of these decent cards. Okay. That's it for the upkeep phase. We're going to move into the mythos phase and then we'll see what we get. Uh, well, actually, act and agenda first of all. We put um, a doom on the agenda. We then check the agenda and say, yes, there are six um, doom on the agenda. So we're going to flip that over and then see what we get. Abruptly, the malformed body of an unnatural nightmare slams onto the stage, its slithering tendrils reaching into the aisles. It opens its maw and lets out a shrill, piercing song. The melody is uncanny, the notes sear into your mind, pain pounds into your forehead and blood runs from your ears. Search all set-aside cards and the victory display for the Royal Emissary Theatre enemy and spawn it in the theatre. Okay, so we'll do that. Go there for the time being, just to show you what the Royal Emissary is. Four fight, four health, two to evade. It's an elite monster, prays the lowest uh, willpower, which is gonna be Harvey. Uh, massive hunter, retaliate. At the end of the enemy phase, each investigator at Royal Embassy's location or connecting location takes one horror and he does two damage to us and he's worth two victory points. So he is going to spawn in the theatre. So he's down, he's down there and he's going to move towards Harvey. So he's going to move to there next turn. Um, so our new Gender. Encore. Um, the creature's song echo, echoes relentlessly through the halls of the theatre. The, the melody repeats again and again, yet somehow never the same tw note twice. Forced. After Royal Emissaries are added to the victory display, remove all Doom from play and reset the agenda deck to 1A. Then place three Doom on that agenda. Oh my goodness. So we do remove all of this doom. It's going to come off. Oops, sorry. All of this doom is going to come away. Okay. Harvey needs to to up his game, as does as does Jacqueline. He needs to 
we need to get some we need to get some offensive stuff in play. At the moment we're we're in pretty much the wrong we're in we're in the opposite positions to where we need to be. Harvey needs to be down where Jacqueline is and um you know Jacqueline's just here on the lighting box. Um to clear that. But Harvey's gonna have to come through come through the Royal Emerald Street. He's not got anything to really deal with it at the moment. So we can see if we can fix that. We can see if we can fix that. Um, but we've got to go to the encounter phase next. That's what we do. We're drawing from the top of the encounter deck. So we're going to, again, as always, start off with Harvey. And he's going to draw. Spires of Carcosa. Revelation. Attack to your location. Then place two Doom on it. Um... If there is no Doom on attached location, discard Spires of Carcosa. If you succeed, instead of discovering clues there, remove Doom from attached location. Well, that's not too bad, but again, more actions soaked up, just clearing the blinking Doom. Um, so we're going to put that there. Oops, sorry. We're going to put that there with two Doom on it. We know it's uh, we know it's got a, a um, crowd of one so we should clear that fairly easily but um let's just see what it says there oh we're gonna take doom for that as well um horror to clear that bloody doom hmm okay well that's annoying um, okay, Jacqueline is going to be getting what she's going to get. She is going to get Rotting Remains. Test um, Willpower 3 for each point you fail by Take Horror. So she's a Willpower 5. Willpower 5. Willpower 5, so let's go Willpower 6 and chuck the Crystal Pendulum in. Willpower 6. Right down the bottom there and draw that one, which is minus 2. So she, she passes. Uh, 4 against 3 beats it. And that's gone back into the Chaos deck. Chaos. Ooh, so that goes into a discard pile, the Crystal Pendulum. So that we've done that, we're now on to the investigation phase. Removed, removed to Doom. Gotta take those two doom more freely. Yeah. So we'll start off with Harvey, who's gonna investigate. It's a shroud of one, which we know. And we're not gonna discover clues, but we are a static five six. Static five or six. See what we get from <sighs> well it's successful but we are going to be succeeding by more than that and because it's an investigate um that still comes into play forced after you succeed by two or more whilst investigating the reversal room take one horror we've, we've done that um that is an investigation here's what it is um, and then second action is going to do the same thing. And he's going to get plus one. <laughs> oh, I love this game. I love the game. Well, we're successful. That's the main thing. We're going to take that doom off there. So the doom is now all gone off the top there. We can discard the spire. 
goes to the discard pile. It's not worth any victory points, unfortunately. Plus one goes back in the bag. <sighs> Third and final action from Harvey is going to be draw a card. And when we draw a card for Harvey, um, he has a special rule, which means he draws more than one in the investigation phase. So we'll draw one. Draw one. He's burning the midnight oil. And then we're going to draw his second, which is higher education. Oh dear. Oh dear, Harvey. And the Royal Embassy is elite. So that's all of Harvey's. He's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. He's at seven cards. That's his three actions used. Oh, Jacqueline's um, special. Does. Oh, I can use one of those cards. Let Harvey know that he's used his special action. Let me just get a token out. With the appropriate colour for Harvey. Just use a nice blue one. Again, LCG tokens. So he's used his special ability rather than Tapman. Okay. So, Jacqueline. We need one clue. We need one clue. Which is going four against three. Yeah. First action. Draw a card. Azure Flame. Yes. Yes, that is what we wanted. That is what we wanted. That's her offensive spell. Now we're talking. Plus one damage. So it's going to take him. It's going to take her twice to to kill him. Well, that's good. We need to move out of this bloody lighting box because to pay it's going to be. Do I have a go? Second action, I am going to have a go. Let me get this right. Let me get this right. So, second action. She's going to investigate. So we're starting the skill test. We're going to spend the last secret off of Scrying Mirror. To start, so we can draw the tokens before we actually start the attempt. No, it doesn't know. It makes no sense. No, what am I doing? What am I doing? Because I can't chuck any cards at this. This is just going to be hope and pray. So let's not do that. So we've, we've spent the one action to investigate. We're not going to use the scrying mirror because there's no books in my hand that I can chuck at it. So it's pointless. Yeah. But we are going to activate Jacqueline's um, special ability. And we're going to we're going to spend three. One normally. But plus two because we're in the lightning lightning lighting box. We need to spend two more to play Dark Prophecy. And what Dark Prophecy is doing is it says fast play when you would reveal a Chaos Token, which we're about to do in a second. 
reveal five chaos tokens instead of one choose one of those tokens uh, no no what am i doing because none of those tokens are going to be useful right rewind <laughs> rewind what i'm saying about sometimes it's quite complicated so i'm going to give myself the three and three resources back and go back sorry i've not drawn anything yet so it's no damage um because i have to choose a token i have to choose a token with a symbol and all of the symbols are going to be bad for me which is minus one with the which she's already got Oh no, she hasn't taken three or more horror. Minus one is still not going to help though, because this is three versus four. No. <laughs> no. Second action. Sorry to mock you about, guys and girls. Second action, she's going to move um, back to the lobby. And then her third and final action, now she's out of the lightning lighting box, is to pay three for the Azure Flame, which is her offensive spell. Move these along a little bit. Get it in. Health. Too busy watch looking at my stuff or not looking at the monitor so that's going to go into there azure flame is going to come in with four charges on it so one two three four and hopefully we're going to be playing chase up and chase the emissary and try and get to it before um before poor old Harvey takes one in the takes one for the team. <sighs> Let's need that last clue. That last clue. Okay, um, so that's it for the investigation phase. The enemy phase. There is um, there is an enemy in play. He's got the hunter, so he's going to move. The backstage. I'm going to try and chase, chase down Harvey because he's the lowest willpower. Um, can't engage because there's not he's not anywhere near anybody or not in the same space. So that's it for the enemy phase. We're going to go into the upkeep phase. We're going to reset our actions so Harvey gets his three back. Jacqueline gets her three back. Now ready any exhausted cards. Nothing's exhausted. We're going to draw a card and gain a resource. So Harvey's going to get a resource. Jacqueline's going to get a resource. Oh, I could have... Um, I could have tapped Rave of Endless Knights to reduce the cost of that spell by one. Too late. Too late. I'm not going to backtrack and do that. Should have should have remembered my cards, so would have had an additional resource. But that's we're way past that now. If I was still in the same phase and hadn't actually completed it, I might have said, "Oh, just a quick, a quick hot tub time machine." But not going to do that now because we're in a completely different phase, two phases beyond it. So to gain the resource, Harvey is going to draw his card. Something nice, preposterous sketches. Um, draw, play only if there's a clue on your location, draw three cards, not good for him. And Jacqueline is going to get another Astral Travel. Not, um, oh. Oh. Of course. It's a three cost though, that's why I couldn't do it. I did look at it, it's the three cost. Okay. So that's it. Um, we're going to check our hand size. Jacqueline's at four. Harvey's getting there now. He has got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 
eight. So he's at maximum hand size. Doesn't have to discard this turn, but he's going to need to play some cards. He's got enough resources to get some stuff down. It's just nothing, nothing really of any use for him. Um, so that's it. We'll check the hand size. That's the last piece of the upkeep phase. I'm going to go into the mythos phase. And Harvey's going to draw his encounter card. Oh, no. No, he's not. We are going to place one Doom on the agenda. One of six. We're okay. We're not going to trigger the agenda. Um, and then we're going to draw into an encounter card for Harvey. So he goes first, and he's going to get Botting Remains. Test three heads. He's got four for each point he fails by. He's going to take a horror. He doesn't really want to do that because he's only at five now. So he's going to bump this up a little bit. So he's going to go. He is going to go. Um, he's got four. He's going to go to five. He's going to go to six. He's still got six cards in his hand. He's still got six cards in his hand. Um, so four, three against six, minus three. Minus three or better. I can take those odds. I can take those odds. See what we get. Six versus three, and we're going to get minus two. We're good. Watching remains goes. Then we're going to draw a card for Jacqueline. Oh dear. Agent of the King, Prey, Most Clues, Hunter, Forced. After Agent of the King attacks you, move one of your clues to Agent of the King. When you defeat Agent of the King, take control of all of his clues. Victory point, no? So he's going to come into... Um, obviously, Jacqueline's threat area. Running out of space here, but you can see what we can see the plan there. Uh, so that's it for the encounter phase. Tidy these cards up a little bit because they're going to fall over. There we go. All done. So we're going to go from there. We're going to go into the investigation phase. Okay. What's Harvey got? Not a lot. Let's have a quick look. I'm going to spend one. I'm going to spend one. So I've used one here. Bring him to play the Solano fragments. Which is a tome. So he's going to go, when he's got five or more cards, he gets plus one book. He's got one, two, three, four, five. There's a reason for doing that. I need to draw into some offensive stuff because that energy is coming right at me. So I'm going to spend next action to draw a card and he's going to use his special ability to get two. So his first card is going to be Cryptic Writings. 
And his second card is going to be Discus and Sumar. <laughs> okay. One. Oh. Um, as a reaction to cryptic writings, I've drawn it in my turn. I've got to play it. So it does, it's not free action. So his second, his third, and final action is to draw that to gain two resources. One, two. Full of resources, nothing to spend it on. One, two, three, four, five, six. And that's all of his actions. One, two, to there, which would engage the priest. We will. And that's what we're going to have to do. Uh, obviously, Jacqueline, sorry, gets her. Does get her. Um, a free token back. Right, so we're going to go on to Jacqueline's turn. She's got some stuff to play. Well, she's got to deal with the Agent of the King, first of all. Ooh, four health. And this is going to be... This is going to be quite punchy. Okay. Again, get the order right here. She's going to spend one action to do one of Azure Plane. Which means she's going to fight using her head instead of her um, fight. Deals plus one damage. So as part of that, as we start a skill test, um, which is begun, so we're going to do Scrying Mirror. Which means that we can um, reveal the Chaos Tokens before Let's just put him over here so we can see what we're doing. So we're going to tap Scrying Mirror. That's all of its um, bits used. Uh, then we're going to spend her uh, once per round to draw three cards instead of um, three tokens instead of one. And we can see what we're up against while we're doing that. Just going against four versus five at the moment. Four versus five. So the first token is that one. Second token is that one. Third token is that one. Oh, okay. Well, clearly we'll get rid of the minus one and the other zero. So we're currently at zero. Um... So she is um, five versus four, um, which is fine, which is absolutely fine. So that does two damage, uh, deals plus one damage. So, so that's two damage to Agent and the King. One, two. Second action, she's going to spend an Azure Flame again. Put those tokens back in the bag. We can't do any shenanigans this time around, so we are going to need to decide what we do before we draw the, the tokens. So she is at five versus four head. So she's going to go six versus four. Seven versus four. And leave her minus three or better. Leave her minus three or better. She's going to get minus one, which is enough to do the other two damage to the agent of the king. Which kills him. Four damage. 
and he is worth a victory point. So we'll keep him to one side in our victory display. So that was her second action. I can't stop the Royal Emissary getting to Harvey this turn. I haven't got enough resources to do an astral travel. I've spent two resource, two actions to kill it. Um, third action. Mm. Move to the theatre. That's it for the investigation phase. We we'll move on to the enemy phase. So the Royal Emissary is going to move and then engage poor old Harvey. So I'll put him down there. And then he's going to do his attack of two. Not too bad. So we'll do one on Harvey. Takes him down to six. And then good old Witten Green who's going to take a damage as well. So that's not too bad. That's not too bad. That's the enemy phase done. Then move into the upkeep phase. We'll set all of our actions. Do that. Do that. Um, ready all exhausted cards. So scrying mirror, although it's got nothing left on it. You, when these... For those that don't play very often or not, um, the once a card runs out of charges, they, it doesn't automatically get discarded. It stays there until you replace it. You can replace it with anything you want, as long as it's the same slot. Um, but it doesn't doesn't immediately disappear. Um, on the Royal Emissary, does that exhaust to attack? I think it does, doesn't it? So. No, no, it doesn't because we haven't. No, I'll leave it like that. Leave it like that. Um, we're ready to all exhausted cards. We then get a resource and get a card. Come on, Harvey. Decent card this time, please, sir. And he gets his weakness. He gets his weakness. Okay, let's have a look at his weakness. Bryce Damned Curiosity. Every three cards in your hand take one damage. So he has got oh, he has got one, two, three, four, five, six. So he's gonna take two damage. One, two, down to four. It's not, not great. And then Jacqueline for her card. He's going to get Crystal Pendulum. It's all like that because it's head. We can use head. Oh, sorry, willpower. We can use willpower. That's good. So that's it for resources and drawing a card. Um, got a hand size. We know that Jacqueline's only got three. And we just counted. Harvey's got six. So we're all good there. Got so many resources to spend, it's ridiculous. That's it for the upkeep phase. We're then going to go into the mythos phase. Oops. Mythos phase, there we go. Um, place a doom on the agenda. Done that. Advance the agenda. No, we don't need to. Um, each investigator draws one from the top of the encounter deck. So let's see what we're going to get for Harvey. <laughs> for old Harvey, he's going to get a swarm of rats. Goes into his rat area. Oh dear. You can see there, Harvey's got his two, his two things on him. It's not looking good. We're going to go for a counter card for Jacqueline. 
if there is no doom in play, you know, blah, blah, blah. Otherwise, test um, willpower where there's no doom. There's two in play, so we should be good on this one. She is at um, five versus two. Five versus two, I'm going to stick with that. We're going to get minus two, which is fine. We pass. We don't have to discard any cards from our hand. Excellent. Okay, we're into the investigation phase. One more clue. One more clue. All I needed. Got two victory points so far though. Thank you, two victory points. Um one, two, and engaged. It's not gonna be enough. Gain a resource. Free to astral travel. I can't engage it. Can I still attack an enemy that's engaged with another? Just going to pause the video. I need to check whether you can attack another. I think you can. Harvey's got nothing. He's going to take three. One fight. He can only fight. He can literally only fight. Um, fight, evade, parlay, or resign. Fight, evade, parlay, or resign. I'm going to go with Jacqueline first. One, two to there, and then three to engage it. That's what we're going to have to do. And then Azure Flame it. Yeah. Okay, so one, two actions. Two actions here to spend two movement to go one, two. And then our third action is going to be to engage the emissary. So she's going to take that off of Harvey. So there. She's going to take a hit, we know that. But hopefully, as you flame it in her turn. And then we can start. Oh, she needs to take a horror because of moving out of um, the theatre. So she's down to five horror. Good catch, MB. Right. Um, RP's going to try and deal with this flipping um, swarm of rats. He can't even deal with a swarm of rats with the cards he's got. Ridiculous. I haven't got anything to evade. His evade is two. I could chuck a burn the midnight oil at it. But still the same. He's one fight, it's one fight. And he's two evade, three evade. Um, so first action. Oh, Harvey gets his special back. As does Jacqueline. She hasn't used it, she didn't need it this turn. Well, not, not this round yet. Um, he's going to try and punch... The swarm of rats. It's 1v1. So a 0 or a plus 1 would be absolutely delightful. We're going to get a 0. <laughs> yes. Right. Swarm of rats gone. 
Swarm of rats gone. Now get on your bike, Harvey. Get on your bike. Okay. So he's got two actions left. So he's going to go... One, two, to the theatre. Two remaining actions. Trying to get down here to get that last clue. And then we can hopefully start to make some movement. Okay, right. Okay, that's the investigation phase. We're on to the enemy phase. And we know that the Emerser M3 is going to do two damage to um, poor old Jacqueline. So one, two, she's down to four health. But that's him done. There is no other enemies in play. So that's it for the enemy phase. We're then going to go to the upkeep phase. Um, there's nothing to be readied. Um, we'll reset our actions, sorry. So we're going to draw, get our three actions back. Three actions back. Um, ready all exhausted cards. There are no, there are no exhausted cards. We draw a card and get a resource. So, mind you, when he, when he does actually get his cards out, he'll be able to use this to do some serious damage. Higher education. So she's at three resources now. Harvey's going to draw his card, which is a deduction. You can get another clue. And then Jacqueline is going to get a voice of Ra. Gain one resource, reveal three random tokens from the Chaos Bag for each symbol received. Gain two resources. It's quite nice. But she needs to take on the Royal Emissary first of all. So that was it for drawing a card. We get our hand size. Um, Jacqueline's at four. Harvey is at seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. He's at seven. Okay, that's it for the upkeep phase. We're on to the mythos phase. We had a doom. So we've got three on the doom now. Nothing to report there. We don't need to extend it. So then Harvey is going to draw his encounter card. Come on, Harvey, get a decent one. Dissonant voices. And I'll, I'll take that. I'll take that. Can't play assets or events. Let's put that on his player so we'll remember. And then Jacqueline, oh god, is going to get frozen in fear. So the first time you perform one of the following actions, it costs you an additional action at the end of the turn. Test. Okay. Oh. So she is only going to get two fight. That's not too bad. It's not too bad. Let's put that in place there so we can see what we're doing. Okay. We're on to the investigation phase. We'll start off with Harvey. We'll start off with Harvey, who's going to go one, two to there. He'll take his horror. We're coming out of the flipping theater that's so annoying that being there because it's literally you have to go through that to get anywhere um yeah i'm not going to waste clues by putting that on there so he's taking his horror so that was two actions one two to move down there third action he is going to um attempt to investigate put dissonant voices there for a second he's not going to play any cards from his hand it's a four it's a four and he's at five six seven he's got five or more cards he's at seven so he's at plus three
he will spend a resource for higher education to get him to eight. So four versus eight minus four will be a draw. So the only th <laughs> the only thing in there that can stop us is the is the um, auto fail. So come on, let's see what we get. And we're going to get a minus three, which means we've successfully passed it. And that was his third action to get the clue. So we've now got six clues. Um, now on the awakening, it just says three clues, um, each for per investigator. Oh, sorry. Let's just show you. Three clues per investigator. There's no action you need to do to progress it, so I'm assuming it's a it's a free action. So we've got the cards. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six from Jacqueline. So six in the bag. Turn that over. Let's see what we get. A shadow creeps along the wall beside you and your heart leaps into your throat. You turn and a figure bits away just out of sight. Either your mind is playing tricks on you or someone else is in the theatre. You follow the direction of the shadow, rounding a nearby corner. At the far end of the hall, he stands awaiting you. A man in an elegant black suit, his face covered by a pale mask. Though his attire has changed, you instantly recognise him as an actor with the, who played the role of the stranger, one of the characters from The King in Yellow. He turns and disappears through an open doorway as if taunting you to follow. Choose one of the set-aside locations at random, put that location into play and spawn the set-aside man in the pallid mask enemy at that location um, instead of his normal spawn location. Advance one of the two copies of Act Two Two A at random, removing the two other copies of Act Two from the game. Right. Okay. So the two, the two, um, the two other random, random um, locations left are. Backstage doorway and a lobby lobby doorway. Oh, I think I need to grab a dice very quickly. I'm just going to pause for two seconds while I just grab a dice. Okay, managed to locate a dice. So one to three, it's going to be the lobby doorway. Uh, five to, uh, four to six, it's going to be the backstage doorway. Backstage doorway, so it's a four. So we'll just put that into play. Backstage doorway. Gonna go there effectively. Alright, so you can see it. Put it there. Next to the backstage, let's just get a little token. Get the double one. That goes there. Backstage doorway. Oh. So, that can go now. Lobby doorway is gone. Then we're going to put the pallid man in the pallid mask into play. He's a four fight, three health, four evade, humanoid elite. We don't worry about the spawn condition because it tells us what to do. Investigate. Your location gets plus two shroud for this investigation. If you succeed, you succeed instead of discovering clues. Defeat the, pan, the man in the pallid mask. Okay. So he's going to go onto the backstage doorway. Then. So that's that bit done. And then it says. Advance one of the three copies of Act 2A at random. Okay. 2A at random. So there's one. There's two. And there's three. And we'll do the same thing. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oops. Two. 
one two is the top one so those two can go that goes as well we get this one in play um, the mysterious stranger from the king in yellow might know something about what happened during the intermission you must find and confront him if you are to discover the truth when the man in the padded mask will be discarded from play advance okay Not too bad so we've got the man in the padded mask is in play we've advanced the act We're on the agenda that's fine that's cool so that was all of harvey's go we've now got um jacqueline who hopefully is going to be able to rip the royal emissary a new one so first action which costs us two because of frozen in fear um because it is a move a fight or evade um she's going to use her azure flame sorry let's bring up that so she spent her two actions because of frozen in fear she's going to spend one off azure flame to do an attack using her head instead of a fight and it deals plus one damage um so we need to do some shenanigans as well we've got nothing on um nothing on we can't use our mirror because we've used it all um she will use her special ability though to draw two tokens so she's going to be drawing three tokens so she's fight he's he's four she is five so plus one six for the pendulum Seven for voice of Ra. So she's at plus three at the moment. She's at plus three. Plus three. And we're going to draw that one. Skull. Um, minus three. If you've got three or more horror on you, she hasn't taken three or more horror because she's at um, far, um, yes she has actually she was at 9 and she's now at 5 so it's minus 3 but minus 3, we're at 3 so we're still good so that does 2 wounds on matey boy so 2 wounds he's got 2 left so that's that and uh, she's used all of her bits and bobs up but she is going to hmm. oh dear I could have tapped ritual candles for that but I didn't I'm not going to because that's a symbol but I've still got it open that means I've still got it open for this attempt so third and final action just going to azure flame again um, she's going to chuck in astral travel to make her plus two make her plus two I think that's all she can do plus two and we're going to get zero yes yes that does the two damage to the royal emirate but it's just enough to kill him Oof. 
That's enough to kill him. So he goes into the victory display. That was her third and final action. Oh, this is getting a bit tense. This is getting a bit tense. Um, at the end of her turn, test three head for Frozen in Fear. So she's at five naturally. We need to get rid of Frozen in Fear. That'd be awesome if she could. So let's, just, oh, let's put the zero back in there. Let's see what she's going to get. She's at plus two. And she's going to get minus three. <laughs> Oh, minus three. Okay. Those frozen in fear still in play. That's annoying. That is very annoying. Okay. We're on to the enemy phase. Um, there are... Um, there is an enemy in play, but he's not a hunter. He's just going to stay there. The man in the pallid mask is not a hunter. He's just going to stay where he is. The zero flame is all spent now, though. That's the only problem. She could do with drawing another one. She could do with drawing another one. Something that's going to help her. Anyway, that's that's um, future mark problem in a, in a couple of rounds. So that's the enemy phase done. We're going to go into the upkeep phase. Um, and we're going to reset all of our actions. So Harvey gets his three actions back. Jacqueline gets her three actions back. Uh, we're going to ready any exhausted cards. There are no exhausted cards. Um, we're going to gain a resource. Draw a card. Harvey needs to spend some of his resources. Um, Harvey's going to draw a card. What's he going to get? He is going to get Bolt of Knowledge. Your maximum hand size is increased by two. Um, after I successfully investigate exhaust vault knowledge and choose an investigator at your location and draws a card okay that's going to be good that's going to be definitely getting played um, that's Harvey's card and then we're going to get a nice card for Jacqueline which is Robes of Endless Night okay fine fine that's the upkeep phase we're going to the mythos phase we're going to put a doom on the agenda which takes us to four we check we're okay still at six then we're going to go into the oh the end of the round dissonant voices goes frozen in fear unfortunately doesn't go um, and then we're going to draw a card for harvey who was going to get a fanatic oh, God. seriously Three fight, two health, three evade. Um, revealed location with the most clues. That is going to be Harvey's location because it's got one clue on it. Um, and he's going to move that clue to the Fnatic. And when I defeat him, he's going to take, going to take all of his clues. Okay, so Fnatic's going to come down here. Actually, will then engage with Harvey and take his clue. Take the clue off him. Oh man, this game is great. Okay, and then um, Jacqueline is going to get, she's going to get Fnatic. <laughs> oh, brilliant. Um, so, revealed location with the most clues. Well, no location has clues anymore. Does that mean I can put them anywhere? Um, I'm going to have to pause and check something. I've just done a quick check of the rules. Um, and according to the, um, the post that I've read, um, if, there clues, if there are no clues on um, any, of the, any of the locations, they all count as zero basically they all count as zero clues which is the most clues so it does say according to some of the uh, the, the posts that i've read 
that you can place the, the, the investigator, it's not the lead investigator in this case, it's the investigator that's basically taken the monster, um, can place it anywhere where there's zero clues effectively, because you're still placing it at the place with the highest clues, um, even if they are not revealed. Um, but what I am going to do is I'm going to put him in a place I've already been and don't really need to go back to, which is down here at the dressing room. That's from what I've read online. Um, if I'm wrong on that, I apologise. Um, but that's what I'm going to do. Okay, um, so that was it for the uh, Mythos phase. Um, we then go on to the Investigator phase. Right. Harvey's in a bit of trouble. Harvey's in a bit of trouble. And if only I had the disc out. If only I had the disc out. I've got two discs in hand, just haven't had the opportunity to play them. Well, I have had the opportunity, I've just chosen not to. Um... Just trying to see if there's anything involved with knowledge, is not going to do anything. I need to be able to fight with my, my books, but I've got nothing in my hand that can... That's a wild card. One wild card. Invade of three. <laughs> We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight cards in hand. Point of three, two wounds, three to evade. We've only evades. One, two evade. I can take it. I can take it to four, and then just get the hell out of dodge. I think that's what I'm gonna have to try and do. So the first action from Harvey is to try and evade the fanatic. He's got an evade of two. He's got an evade of two. Um, unfortunately, he's going to play Vault of Horror. Vault of Knowledge, sorry. And Burning the Midnight Oil. That's plus two, so it takes him to four. Takes him to four. Five actually, because the bolt knowledge has got a wild card on it. So he's at five versus three plus two. Five versus three. There's nothing else I can chuck at it, I don't think. No. Five versus three. What we're going to do. Has he taken three horror? He started off with eight. He's down to four, so that's minus three, six. With three or more horror on you. He has taken, yeah, he has. He was at an eight horror. One, yeah. Ah. <sighs> so that's, that was his first action. Can't spend anything. Second action, I'm just going to try and do a straight. I need a plus. 
need a plus one. Um, there's nothing in there. Sorry. I mean, you can take that, you can take that here, but it's just not doing anything. So I've spent one action so far to try and evade. I hate to do this. Second action, I evade it, he needs the plus one. It's a tough one. Let's go in there. Oh! Oh! Plus one, draw a card. So he does evade it. It's a draw. And he gets to draw a card. Right, so, hang on a second. Um, so he's going to evade the Fnatic. What's that? He gets to draw a card, and because it's his turn, he gets to draw two cards. One, burning the midnight oil, feed the mind. Come on. Okay. That was his second action. His third action is going to have to be to move. Third action to move back to the lobby. Oof. Okay. That was him. Right. Now with with um, Jacqueline, she gets her freebie back. She's not really set up to go against the pallid man at the moment. Um, she could evade him, but that's not really what we want to do. She's got frozen in fear in play as well. So her first action is going to be to draw a card. First action, draw a card. Clairvoyance. Not really that great. Second action, draw a card. Familiar Spirit. Not great. Third action, draw a card. All right. One, two, three, four, five. That was wasn't a great turn. That one. It was not a great turn. Anyway, that's it from the investigator phase. We're going to the enemy phase. Um, he's going to ready. Not going to get the victory point for him at the moment because he's still. There's still a clue there, effectively. Batik's not going to move. Um, Man in the Pallid Mask is not going to move. That's it for the enemy phase. Upkeep. By, oh, uh, end, end of the round. Frozen in Fear, sorry. Frozen in Fear for um, Jacqueline. So she's five against three. Six against three, seven against three. I need to get rid of that frozen in fear. Seven against three. She gets 
minus three. Seven against three, minus three, done. Done, I suppose. It's well. that. So, familiar spirit and voice of Ra goes to her discard pile. We've got a hypnotic gaze there. We've got a hypnotic gaze and we've got her... He does. No, he only does one sanity. Um, okay. Right. Um, upkeep phase, reset all actions. Okay, so you know, Harvey's going to get his three actions back. Jacqueline's going to get her three actions back. Ready all exhaust cards. Got no exhaust cards. Draw a card, gain a resource. Harvey's got a shed ton of resources. Jacqueline's starting to build hers up nicely as well now. Draw a card. Now, this needs to be a good one for Harvey. We've been saying that all game. That's a treachery. <laughs> uh, let's have a look. Nilism. Put Nilism into play into your threat area. After you reveal, cancel or ignore a um, auto fail token. Take one damage and one horror. Two cards to discard Nilism. After you reveal, cancel or ignore a auto fail token. Take one up. Sort of live with that, I think. Remember that's in play, and then um, Jacqueline's going to draw a card. Defiance. Before revealing chaos tokens for this test, choose one of the following symbols. Skull, blah blah blah. Ignore the effects of the chosen symbol during this test, including its modifier. Well, that would be handy because we know there's three skulls in there, so that would probably be the best one to ignore. Um, that's it for the upkeep phase. We then move on to the mythos phase. We had a doom, we check. Five doom of six, so that's not too bad. But the Royal Emissary is going to come back in. I need to try and take the man in the pallid mask out. Okay. Encounter phase. Let's see what we get. Harvey is going to get the rotting remains. Test head three, willpower three for each point. I'll take horror. So he's four. He's four. We can spend some of his resource. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So he's going to. So he's. Um, he's four. Five, six, seven. Which takes it to a minus anything other than the auto fail. We're going to get Mythos card. Plus one, draw a card. Lovely. So that's going to go. How many times have we drawn that thing tonight? And draw a card. Be good. Be good. Witten Green. Okay. So that was. Harvey, and then um, Jacqueline's going to get Black Stars Rise, Test Book of Four. If you fail, place one Doom on the current agenda or take, or take one Horror for each point you fail by. So she's a three book. We don't want to do that. That's a four book, it's a five book, so minus one or better. Nothing else is there. 
Minus one or better. Minus two, so I fail by one. I'll take a horror, takes it down to four. I'm not gonna put a doom on that, no chance. So it's gonna go back in there. So those two go to the discard pile. That's it for the mythos phase. We're on to the investigator phase. All right, Harvey, you need to need to do some stuff here, mate. First of all, I'm going to spend three for Harvey. First action. Spend one. Spend three. One, two, three. To put out a disc of its armor. When a non elite enemy spawns at my location, discard it and automatically, automatically evade it or deal two damage. That's good. Um, Gonna spend my second action, spend three. Put feed feed your mind in play, which is uses three secrets. Test book for each point I succeed by I draw um, a card. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I, can, I need to cycle through some of these cards and get rid of them. So for his third action, I'm going to do Feed the Mind. He's got a book of one. He's got a book of five. Book of six. Book of seven. Of seven, book of eight. Let's go for that. Eight versus one. It's the cards in hand. Eight versus one. Eight versus one. And we're going to get zero. To, <laughs> um, to a maximum of three. So we're going to draw three cards effectively. So those two, those three go. And he's going to get Encyclopedia, Extensive Research, Arcane Enlightenment. Okay, still not really. If I use both for my occult initiation, just a quick look through the discard pile. Well, there's still one in there. I've only used one. There is one in there. There is one in there. And now we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven cards in hand. So they're all good still. Seven cards in hand. Um, right, on to Jacqueline. So she's got rid of her frozen in fear. She's digging, she wants the other Azure Flame. It's the only way she's going to be able to take out the man in the pallid mask. So 
we're gonna we're gonna dig from the deck again. So I want to draw a card, which is gonna get Arbiter of Fates. That's cool. Which means she can do an ability twice. Which means that she will do that. So she'll spend one. Spend three. One, two, three. To get Arbiter of Fates out. Basically what that means is that she can do her, her, her testing twice. Actually, another token there. Oh, we can just, just, just exhaust that card. Um, she needs another decent spell, so one to draw a card again she's going to get inevitable truth okay okay that's it for the investigation phase onto the enemy phase well none of them move as we know they will just stay there um, and then we're going to move on to the upkeep phase, reset all of our actions, reset all of our actions, ready any exhausted cards, there's no exhausted cards there, gain a resource, gain a resource, draw a card, draw a card, RB is going to get another Arcane Enlightenment. And Jacqueline is going to get Prescience. Maximum committed one per skill test. After you commit Prescience to the skill test, name even, odd, or symbol. After this test, after you commit prescience to a skill test, name, even, odd, or symbol. Um, if a chaos token of name type was revealed during the test, you may return a spell card from your discard pile to your hand. Okay, I think I've got a plan. I think I've got a plan now. I think I have a plan. Okay. So that's it for the upkeep phase. We're going to the mythos phase. Unfortunately, we're going to go one. And it's going to... Um, after the Royal Emerald series added to the victory display, room or I'll reset the deck to agenda. Oh, just reset the agenda to 1A. Sorry, my apologies. What have I done wrong here? Oh, I think I've done it wrong. No, we're at six. I'm going to read that. We're at six. Okay. The song grows louder and louder until it all drowns out with all of your thoughts. You collapse to the floor and cover your ears, but try as you might, you cannot muffle the intensity of the creature's awful voice. The whole world threatens to close around you until you, at last you hear a discordant phrase throughout the melody, exit now. Each investigator takes 100 horror, cannot be prevented. Well, I think I've done it correctly. My apologies if I've gone wrong. I think I've done that correctly. Killed him. Okay. 
think that's right. And so we take one under 100 horror. And that is that. Okay, right, I'm just going to tidy up and then we can work out um, our, any victory points we've got, etc. And we'll go from there. See you in a sec. Okay, just a very quick one. Uh, I've just done a quick round up and have a look at the victory display and what, what victory points we've got. We didn't finish to clear one of the halls, although the clue was on the Fnatic. I don't think it's fair to say that the room, the location was cleared because the location actually still, for me, technically had a clue on it. It was just on the Fnatic, so I'm not going to take that as a win. So we did kill the, victory, the Royal Emissary for two victory points. We did clear the rehearsal room for an extra victory point, And we did kill Agent of the King for a victory point. So as far as I'm aware, we've got four victory points. Um, in the next video, the next part of this video, we're going to move across to the campaign work through the resolution and then work through um, where we're at. Okay, we're now at the campaign log so we can see how we've done. So we're going to go to proceed to resolutions. No resolution was reached. Each investigator was defeated, which we were because we all took 100 horror at the end of it. So let's continue that. So we were defeated. Continue. So once again, you are started awake, this time by cold, clammy fingers of a hand on your shoulder. Are you all right? An elderly man asks, helping you to your feet. Your mind is a flurry of memories. Last you remember, the Ward Theatre had become a place of nightmares, filled with dangerous fanatics and strange terrors. Worried, you glance, at your, you glance at your surroundings only to find yourself on the rain slick curb outside the theatre. Despite the events from earlier, the, the city seems normal to your eyes, or at least what passes as normal for Arkham. The bright glare of headlights drills into your eyes as cars pass on the street, splashing dirty rainwater onto the sidewalk beside you. The old man wears an expression of concern, noting the terror in your eyes. Were you mugged? Damn those trouble boys, he exclaims dry gulching folk on a night out of the theatre. Not a single street those hooligans haven't staked a claim on, I tell you. You stand and walk over the, to the front of the window of the ward theatre to tentatively peer through. It's too dark to see anything inside. The elderly man eyes, eyes you curiously for a moment, then shrugs and continues walking. Well, I'd best be on my way. I'd do the same if I were you, he says, rounding the street corner. You quickly follow, hoping to, hoping to warn him to stay away from the theatre. But when you turn the corner, it's not the elderly man you see, but the familiar sight of the stranger in his featureless, pallid mask. His unwavering gaze bears down upon you. Who are you? You call out. The stranger does not respond, but instead turns and disappears into the alleyway behind the theatre. You give chase, hoping for answers, but by the time you reach the alleyway, it's empty save for a notice on, on the wall near the theatre's employee entrance. Don't be a wet blanket. Come to the King in Yellow cast party, 8pm, at the home of Constance Dumain, 1452 Atlantic Avenue, formal dress only. You tear the notice from the wall and take it with you, frustrated and lost. In your campaign log, record the stranger is on to you. Add the Add the pallid mask, the man in the pallid mask weak weakness to the lead investigator's deck does not count towards a deck size. So that's going to go into Harvey's deck. For the remainder of this campaign, any time the bearer of the man in the pallid mask leaves the campaign for any reason, choose a new investigator to become the bearer of the pallid man in the pallid mask weakness and add it to the investigator's deck. Harvey Walters earns it. Fine. In your campaign log under Chasing the Stranger, place one tally mark for each time the man in the pallid mask is defeated during the scenario. For the remainder of the campaign, keep a running tally of the number of times he's defeated. Each tally will bring you one step closer. Well, we didn't defeat him, so let's continue that. So each investigator earns experience equal to the value, X value of each card. So that was four. Let me just double check that. Two, 
three, four. Yeah, that's four. One, two, three, four. Continue. Update decks. Okay. Number below already already include all the trauma, victory points, and story assets you've gained during the resolution. Well, he's taken a mental trauma, isn't he? Because they're defeated by him. So there's one there. One there. Save. Save. Right, I'm just going to pause it while I choose the new cards. Okay, I've now had the chance to look through the um, XP cards, the upgrade cards for both Harvey and Jacqueline that come with the starter deck. Um, now let's just go through with Harvey first of all to see what I've spent it on. So let's go to view deck. View deck. Um, what I've done with Harvey is I have taken out two copies of extensive research, which is the 12 cost um, card that he had in his original starter deck. And I've replaced that with a bit more of an offensive um, process which is the two cost um, I've got a plan so two XP I've got a plan so I put two of those in which means he can fight using his intellect rather than his fight so that makes him a bit more durable and there's like I say two copies of that in there so we have stuck with thing with Harvey we've stuck with um, the cards that came with his starter deck however with Jacqueline um i i haven't um i've i've spent the four xp um i looked through her upgrade cards that came with the star deck and i think i'm just going to be hamstringing myself hand you know handicapping myself moving forward um and i don't really want to do that because you know it's the game is supposed to be fun <laughs> and i think i was unnecessarily putting a handicap in there which didn't doesn't really didn't, didn't really need it so I'm, I have gone against what I've said, but there you go. That's uh, as with all these things, it's my game, so I can do what I want uh, within the rules, um, and that's what I'm going to do. So what I've done is I've taken out uh, Prescience, two copies of Prescience and two copies of Familiar Spirit, and replaced them with um, two copies of the Spirit Anathem, Anathemy, Anathemy. Um, which is the one XP dagger, which allows uh, me to do a free action, get plus two to a spell ca uh, card, um, spell cast, uh, spell test when I'm doing it. Um, and also I put in two copies of the zero level shriveling, um, to, just again, to make her a bit more offensive. We found in the first game that there were situations where she needed to be a bit more offensive and having two more cards in shriveling now with the azure um flame card we're, we're, we're a little bit more offensive so we've spent our xp for both jackling and um harvey uh, and we're now ready to move on to the next part of the campaign which is the last king and that'll be the very next episode so i hope you've enjoyed this playthrough of curtain call um, and we look forward to seeing you and playing uh, and taking Jacqueline and Harvey through the next scenario. Thanks for watching. Um, as I've said, I'm thinking about doing a side scenario. Um, so any thoughts that anybody has on that, please drop it in the comments below. But thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.